Hallelujah, Lord. Lord. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet all over the building. Amen. And just give God praise for today. Who's happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Who is excited? Who comes in here and wakes up and gets themselves together and comes to this place because they know that what is given in this place is truly going to enhance their lives? No. Right? Amen. We know because we're here all the time. Come on. Amen. I do see two guests in the house. If you could just let me know your name and who invited you real quick. Aaron. Oshonda. Oh, Aaron on, and Oshonda oh, invited Lord. you. Dylan um, and Aaron invited you. Yeah. Dylan and Aaron brought somebody. See, that, that's kind of powerful, right? They ain't never been in this place. They may not know what to expect. So Come see, on. we're praising God because we know what happens. Come on. Come on. And, uh, Aaron said, Dylan, come on with me because I don't know what's about to happen, but I, I think you should come. Yeah. And that's such a blessing. He, he loves you enough to say, if I'm going to get something, I'm going to take you with me. Come on. Amen. Remember that. Come on. Amen? Amen. Let's go ahead and pray while we're out standing to our feet. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, Lord God. Jesus, we welcome you in this place, Lord God. We ask that your anointing fall. Your anointing, Father God, that's able to affect change, Father God. We thank you and praise you for these doers of the word, Lord God. We thank you and praise you that the word that goes forth today, Father God, will be from you and of you, Father God. I thank you and praise you right now as you use me to deliver this word, Father God, that you would increase you and me, Father God. Increase your Holy Spirit in my thoughts and my words, Lord God. I pray that it would penetrate, Lord God, that it would go deep into the hearts of your people, Father God, and truly, truly bring about the change that you so desire to see, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for your return to a church that's without spot or blemish, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, that this place, Father God, this place, Father God, will be what you called it to be, and we just thank you. We thank you for every person that chose to come in this place today, Father God. We ask that you continuously add the blessing onto their life. From this, your word, Father God, and we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you and we give you the praise. We give you the honor and we give you the glory, Lord God, as it's due only unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Let's give God some praise. Before you take your seat, and you may be seated, amen? So, a lot of different things um, going on and going through my mind. Um, this morning and as I prepared for this word, uh, most importantly is because it, it is it's truly something that God entrusts you with. And uh, when pastor calls you and tells you to do the word, and it doesn't matter how many times you get up here and do it, you have that same obligation every Amen. single time that brings about this nervousness because Amen. you are responsible this morning for giving the people what they need. Amen. 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 And what God said. It's never of you. And no matter how many times you do it, it's still very, very uncomfortable because it's a heavy weight. Amen. It, it's one thing to be responsible for me and, and my dilemma. What I was thinking about this morning was, did you already preach in this dress? Amen. And like at the end of the day, that's not really a big deal, right? Amen. Right? You look good in it today, just like you did last time, if you did last time. It ain't, ain't a big deal, right? When I'm worried about me, but when you're concerned and worried about the people and what they're going to get, that's a different type of weight. It's a different type of weight, right? Um, with that being said, you don't want to, I don't, I'll speak for myself. When asked to give the word, I don't ever want to come up and change the direction that the pastor is leading this ministry. Amen. Um, it's to introduce me as the assistant pastor. I am not. I am the assistant to the pastor. The assistant pastor is Minister Peggy. I know it was just in your introduction, but let's make that plain. I have a position and a ranking in this church, and it is definitely well under pastor. So I don't ever want to get up here and steer the boat where pastor's not taking it. Amen. I don't want to come with some new idea that distracts us from where he was going. Amen. And, and so that makes that, the, the weight even heavier, right? Amen. But I've learned some things, right? So we're in 2020 vision. That's mm -hmm. where we've been as a ministry. 2020 vision, Amen. clear eyesight. It is God's divine, divine order in which he had pastor to start this ministry and then for us to be celebrating a huge milestone, which is 20 years of ministry in the year 2020, Amen. right? Amen. That's like, 
that's mind blowing. Amen. It's amazing. Amen. And everything that we've accomplished as a ministry, we've accomplished it alone. We've done things through this ministry that mega ministries have not been able to accomplish. Amen. That ministries who are under the support and care of huge um, ministerial umbrellas haven't been able to accomplish. This has been done with a faithful man and woman of God and a handful of, of good wood. Come on. Amen? Amen. Amen? And when I say good wood, Come on. Man, sometimes it gets a real frustrating when you see people who ain't being good wood. Amen. And you start to let it mess with you, right? Come and on, man. and but you can't. Amen. Because for the most part, we are good wood. Amen. Amen. Yes. The most of us are good wood. And what's good wood? It don't uh split when you hammer a nail into mm. it. Come on. Come on. It doesn't uh warp or turn up. We, we, I'm not going to point it out, Come on. but we were building some, some frames and pastor told us to build them a certain way. And, and one of the pieces of wood was weird. And, and now we're, we have this weird looking frame, right? It wasn't good wood. It warped, it shifted, it changed because some pressure went on it. When it got nailed into the wall and some pressure got on it, Amen. it started to shift and change. This is not part of my message, but I, I, if I'm led to say this, then I'm going to say it. I'm good wood. Am I perfect and, and perfected wood? Oh, no, no, no. I got some knots and some dark spots, some discoloration running all through me. But I'm good wood. Yes. Amen. Pastor can hammer a nail. Life can hammer a nail, and I'm still going to show up. Come on. Amen. I ain't Come on, never yes. missed a Sunday because my son was sick. Come on. Come on. And if you took that out of the shot, I hope it hit you in the heart. Amen. So you can die to self because that is self. Amen. And that was one example. There's lots of examples, but that is to the minority in this ministry. The majority of this ministry is good wood. Amen. So I'm talking to the good wood this morning. The wood that's going to withstand some weight Amen. and is ready for a little bit more. See, we left off last week with the lepers and the this time tomorrow. So we're going to go on a little ride this morning. I'll pick you up. When I was little, I used to love going to the grocery store with my mom, right? I'd be the one up. We have four siblings. And I'd be the one who woke up to go with her because I knew every stop we made, I was going to get something. Mm. My mama worked all week. So Saturdays, she had to make all her stops. And even if it was just a quarter in the gumball machine, I was going to get something at every stop. So take you on a little ride. Hope you get something at every stop. But I'm, a, I'm going to drop you back off where I picked you up from. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. I'm not taking you nowhere away from where Pastor is going. That's the endeavor. So 2020 vision, the lepers, this time tomorrow, the gatekeeper, all of that. That's where we're coming back to. But with that, um, you guys know I received a new, I'm going to call it a promotion in life. Amen. Um, even though it's just a job, because God is involved in everything that involves me, all right. it's a life promotion, right? Amen. Um, this is an opportunity to meet new people, to do new things. Yes. And I got, I got my first paycheck. Amen. Uh, yeah. This is Amen. a promotion. Amen. Amen. And I'm loving it. And I, and, I, and I love it. And I deserve it. And I went through some things to get there. But I'm on this new promotion, right? But out of everything that I've gotten, and I told you that paycheck was good. And I'm bragging on God. You can call it what you want, but I'm bragging on God, right? Amen. Um, because, yeah, yeah. I may, yeah, let me. <laughs> no, I'll say it. I dropped out of high school when I was. 16 years old and pregnant with my son and I make more than people who have master's degrees. Amen. So, once again, I ain't scared to brag on it because it, it truly is God. I didn't need that paper. I did go back and finish it, by the way. Amen. But um, to be honest, it was after I even applied for this job. So God made sure I knew who it was. It wasn't me. Amen. But anyway, out of everything that I've received and I'm meeting people and I'm learning new information and things are happening, the most, the best thing that I received from God in this promotion was a renewed, authentic relationship with him. Amen. And by that, what I mean is we as leaders, when you are a leader, which we are all leaders, some of us are leaders in this ministry. Some of us have higher titles and rankings in this ministry. Um, nonetheless, some of us are leaders in our households. Um, you have children that you're leading to a certain place. We might be husbands that we're leading our wives and families. Um, we're the Joseph of our families. So we're leading our extended family to a place. And when you're in a position of leadership, you will notice that it becomes hard to be honest at times. 
okay? And by that, I don't mean that I come in here fake and phony, but what I mean is certain things that I go through and I struggle with, I'm not going to come in here and tell you about. Amen. Because I'm leading you somewhere. Amen. And, and so I'm not going to come in here and tell you, God gave me this great job and this and that, but I'm so afraid. I'm definitely terrified of this and that. I'm not going to have that conversation with you because I'm trying to lead you. Amen. I'm not having that conversation with my sons because they haven't reached the level of maturity where they can even fathom what I'm going through. Pastor doesn't come over here, and although he is very, very honest with us and open with us, he's not talking to you about his marital problems. I can guarantee you that. He's not talking to you about his family issues or, or his personal issues or personal struggles. Why? Because he's leading you somewhere. So with that, it becomes very difficult. I told y'all y'all was on for a ride this morning. We go on a whole bunch. We got a whole bunch of stops. Get something at every stop. But with that, it becomes so difficult to be authentic and be honest with what you're going through and what you're feeling. And what we do is we suppress it and we keep it inside. And everybody has to have somebody that they can let that out to. Amen. You have to. Um, everything about our being, everything about us is designed to intake and get rid of. We eat food. We get rid of it. We breathe in oxygen. We breathe it out. So... You can't continue to take on stuff and not have a way of releasing it, but we as leaders sometimes get to that place. So I got up that Tuesday morning, Monday was a holiday, Tuesday morning, first day of work, and I got in the car, and this is the point of change that I realized how unauthentic my relationship became with God, because I got in the car, and I'm still faking the funk. I'm getting dressed, and I'm acting excited, and all of this, and I get in the car, and I'm like, Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. And I'm like, and it, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Like you're addressing God like you're in front of a congregation that you gotta be Preach, Rosa. You gotta be strong for. Mm -hmm. You're addressing God like you do when you're trying to teach and lead your children on how to pray. But what you got on you right now is gonna require a little bit of a authenticity. Amen. So then my conversation immediately switched and I was like, Jesus, God, I, you know I'm not ungrateful. You know I thank you for this. This is more money than I've ever made. I'm doing something that I never thought I would do. You're taking me places, but I am so afraid. I don't know if Andrew's going to wake up in a good mood this morning. I have to leave my sons and be 63 miles away from them. If anything happens, I'm 63 miles away from them, and that terrifies me. And I'm not going to walk in here Sunday morning and talk about it because you don't talk about the stuff you're going through. Amen. You help people with the stuff that you made it out of. Amen. But there's that weird place where you're still going through it and you can't really be honest about it Amen. until God gives you the remedy and takes you through it. Amen. So I'm, I'm, I'm literally at this point crying and the beauty in an authentic conversation. Have you ever talked to pastor and been um, not real? I have. I know y'all are perfect. You real every time you go yeah. to the man of God. But I'm, I've gone to him before with something on my heart. And he's like, you, you good? And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. And he's like, well, God bless you. There's not much two-way conversation because you ain't being real. Amen. And that's become what it had become with God. Like, I'm talking to you, but I'm not talking to you out of this authenticness and this honesty. So the two-way conversation almost shuts down. But then when you get to that place, when you go to pastor and say, pastor, like, I don't know what to do. Has he ever said, well, God bless you and walked away? Nope. I can guarantee you he has not. For me, he has not. That's when he's like, take a walk with me. Amen. Yeah. Let's hit a couple laps around this property. Amen. Spend some time so I can minister to you. So I can really understand what's going on and, and address your need. Amen. Right? Amen. right? Amen. So then I got to having that conversation with God and it becomes authentic and it becomes very two-way. So now me and God are really talking and, and I give him the, the authentic ability to minister back and I'm like God I'm scared and he took me to a place where he was like but you remember when Dylan started football you was working ministry right mm. and so his practices were on Tuesdays and Thursdays and you, you just you started coming to church real late every Tuesday and Thursday because you had to be at practice with him you remember that and I'm like yeah I remember that and he's like and do you remember a pastor called you in the office and was like so you just not coming on Tuesdays and Thursdays because he playing football now and I'm like yeah that's my son, and I'm not leaving him with strangers. Okay? I don't know them coaches. I don't know them people. And I'm not just leaving him there. And he said, okay, 
So you telling God that you know how to do it better than him. You can watch over, cover, and protect your child better than he can. Mm, that's good. So you're going to neglect the business that God gave you to handle to go do something that God is perfectly capable of doing. Amen. Leave that boy at practice, pray over him, and be at church. Amen. He said, you don't have nothing to worry about. So then my prayer kind of changed, and I'm like, Lord, I'm leaving their presence, but I'm leaving them in good hands. I know you got them, and, I, and that area is, is good. And then with everything that was on me, and I don't have to tell you everything, but everything that was on me, I started to have these real authentic conversations. So over the last five years, like or five weeks, like I get in the car now, and I'd be like, whoo, hey Jesus, we here again. It's way more, because I need you to, I need you to speak to me. I need you to give me something. I need to have this real, real, real relationship with you right now, because I'm doing some things, and I'm moving some things, and I miss this so much. So of all the things that I've gained in this promotion, it has truly been the relationship, the authentic relationship with God. So with that, that was just the first stop. Um, with that, um, pastor told me last Sunday, you know, I need you to do the word. And I said, okay. And um, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. So I'm, I got plenty of time to spend with God. I'm going to hear from him. And I'm in the car Tuesday morning. And I'm like, hey, Jesus, we're here again. Um, what, what are we going to talk about this morning? Oh, I got to do the word this week. So tell me what you want, you know, the people. And I don't want to stray from where pastor was going. And so let's think about that. Let's think about the word last Sunday. So we started talking about the word last Sunday. And I was like, Man, that message, this time tomorrow, mm. that's a very powerful message. Amen. Amen. Pastor referenced when he preached that over on Division, and I have brought somebody in with me, um, and he didn't give you the whole details of it, but I saw the whole, Pastor might not have even known the whole details of it, but I did. I knew that this guy that I had brought, um, which was an extended family member of mine, um, brought him in, he had just gotten out of prison. But he had been in prison for five years, never had a job, mm. never had a job before. Wow. Yeah. I could barely even walk through the mall with this person because he was so, um, what, they, what they do to our men in prison is a shame, but that's a whole nother story. But yeah. institutionalization is real. Yeah. When you're trapped in a cage with, um, with, with crazy people, then you look over your shoulder everywhere you go and you're uncomfortable in a public setting. And um, he was ex extremely uncomfortable in a public setting. And I couldn't even go to like Taco Bell with him without him standing backwards at the counter so he could watch his back. And I'm like, this is whoa. And he had never had a job before, but he had a desire and a need to, to start doing something with his life because all the years that he lost and he came in here and the man of God preached this time tomorrow and he, he received it. And the very next day, he got a job at T-Mobile in the middle yeah. of a kiosk, in the middle of the mall wow. during one of the busiest seasons. And he was so good at it that he got promoted to manager yeah. almost wow. immediately. Yeah. And because of this time tomorrow. Yeah. So then I start thinking about that message, and I'm like, yeah, that's a good message. And, and um, the people were, you know, I don't know, God, I don't feel like if they knew what I knew about that message, Amen. they would have been mm. screaming and running and wasn't nobody running around the church. Like, wow. you know, if you had something that you needed this time tomorrow, Amen. and you would have yes. been up and after the full. And I'm like, Hallelujah. God, what's up with these people? Hallelujah. I catch myself. What's up with these people? And God was like, you wasn't running. <laughs> this is that authentic relationship see Amen. I forgot to tell you sometimes when pastor take that walk around the property uh, and you you here to complain about somebody else <laughs> he might be like what about you Amen. God's like you weren't jumping you weren't running you, you knew what that meant the power that that message had and you were excited but you weren't acting like this time tomorrow and I'm like well I got my job <laughs> I got my job mm. right Amen. I, I did I got a job my bills are paid um I bought some vapor maxes the other day Amen. <laughs> they're cute too <laughs> um my son is you know he's growing he's made significant progress and I and even in it, I I have this peace that you gave me, God. You gave Amen. me this job, so that area is straight. You gave me this peace with my children, Amen. that they're straight. 
I didn't really have much to like jump up and and even ask you for, right? Mm, that's right. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, because your vision is immature. And I was like, dang, that's wow. deep. And then I'm thinking about maturity and the scripture that says he gave some pastors and teachers and for the perfecting of the saints to mature the saints, because we won't ever be perfected, but we, we mature. Amen. You're supposed to mature, yeah. right? Yeah. You have to. Um, the maturity of the saints. That's what the pastor's job is to do. And see, I was like, I'm straight, God. I'm, I'm actually good right now. And what happens is we get so, we come in here and there's two main times when we touch God. Mm. It's when we really, really, really need something. Yeah. Amen. Like that word gonna hit you mm. when you really, really mm. need something. Amen. Or right after he did what you really, really, really needed. Amen. Like, you come in here crying like it's a... I, anybody ever attended a Sunday after God sent Amen. you a miracle? Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. him like you lost your mind. Hallelujah, Lord. But what happens those other Sundays? Mm. You just come in here, the word, the powerful word goes forth, and it wasn't for you, it was for somebody else up in here? Mm. It's not quite the way it works. See, let's talk about the immature vision. Like, how do we know that our vision is immature. Yes. Yes. Consider a baby when it's born. I meant to open up with a scripture because preparing the word, I didn't have a lot of scripture, but if you need a scripture, uh, Proverbs 29 and 18 says um, that the people perish. Where there's no vision, the people perish. Amen. Amen. Where there's no vision, the people perish. Remember that word perish. Where there's no vision, right? Amen. Amen. Have vision, right? But how do you know when it's immature? When a baby is born, they're most often born with their eyes closed, wow. right? Amen. Because their eyes have been closed for nine months, and there's protective like jelly all over them. And, and then when they start to develop sight, they can only see blurs and images. And then it starts to be a little more clear to objects and things that are close up. And as they mature, mm -hmm. their sight goes a little bit further. They can see a little bit more, right? Amen. Anybody have babies? Is it true? Amen. I have a baby. It's true. I'd be talking from across the room, and he's looking around because he can't see that far, right? Amen. And that's what happens. Our vision is immature. Amen. We can only see what's right in front of us. See, when I came into the ministry, I was a 19-year-old girl with a 2-year-old baby and no high school diploma. What I needed, what I could see that I needed was to get a job. Mm. Right? Mm. right? Got a job. That's all I could see was me. Wow. What was right here. Amen. And then as my vision started to mature, I could now see my children. Amen. So that my prayers have shifted. That's right. Amen. Judge your vision by your prayers. Wow. Amen. Amen. See, the problem is that, well, I'll say that. I could start to see my family. I could... I'm praying for my son. At the time, it was just me and Dylan, and I'm praying for us, and now we need a place to live. So I'm starting to see a little bit further than just right here in front of me, the things that we need, right? And then the vision has matured to a point where I see a little bit past my family. Wow. I pray deeply for my man and woman of God. I pray for my pastor and first lady because I see them. I see them Tuesdays and Thursdays. Not every single day like I do my sons, but they're a little bit further. But now I'm starting to pray for them more. Mm. And, and I'm praying for Alexis. <laughs> and I'm praying for Joby because I see them every Tuesday and every Thursday and every Sunday. And so they are in my slightly extended. Wow. Mm. That's what I'm praying for. That's what my prayers are about. It's them. Mm. You know? Yeah. But that's pretty much the extent of it. You know that your vision is immature when you are still desperately praying for and seeking a blessing mm. rather than praying for and desperately seeking to be a blessing. See, this job that I have is great for me. I can pay my bills. I can buy the stuff I want to buy for me and my children. I can take care of you know, the budget for the ministry and where it is right now. I can play my part. I can give my tithes. Mm -hmm. But I can't pay nobody else's rent. Wow. Amen. 
if somebody beyond my scope of what I'm seeing needed something, I couldn't help them. So I'm not screaming and hollering and praising God because my vision is still very selfish. It's still just about me. See, let me explain something to you. Have you ever been over to the house? Anybody? Yep. Yes. I have. Uh, and the house is beautiful, okay? God has been so good to our man and woman of God. The house is beautiful. Every room of the house is beautiful. There's like cabinetry and the, there's a lot of time that house was truly prepared. And of that whole house, my favorite room in that house is the kitchen. It is. Mm. They have these glass cabinets, right? that you can see straight through on both sides. So you don't even got to guess where the cup you're looking for is at. Uh, and if you ever seen First Lady's spice rack, she'd be like, what you looking for? And I'll tell her and she'll pull it out. It comes from right on the side of the stove and it's like rows of spices and it's skinny. It's so bomb. And there's this island in the middle that you can wash your hands so you don't have to wash them in the sink. And then the microwave sings. <laughs> I love the kitchen, but I'm a cook. I love the kitchen, right? If pastor's vision was immature, his kitchen is bomb. Amen. Right? Amen. He can cook whatever he wants in that kitchen. First lady can cook everything he taught her how to cook in that kitchen. Just kidding, first lady. <laughs> Why would his vision be to build a kitchen for us? Wow, right. Amen. He has a kitchen. to be prepared. Amen. And that's what happens. I didn't get up and yell, yell and run and jump and scream because I have what I need. Amen. But that kitchen is for us. Yeah. Yeah. That kitchen is because oh, my yeah. business, the business that God gave me, that kitchen is so that the business that God gave me can have a space to prepare the food. So that when we expand our cooking classes beyond LA County, we will have a place to go ahead and handle it. I'm talking to Pastor I'm passionate. When I talk, when I'm talking to Pastor about that kitchen, he's like, I'm like, yeah, Pastor. So, you know, if we build it the right way, which Pastor's only into the right way. Amen. Amen. We talked about that sustainable success. Go back and watch that message, right? It's the one that can't be taken away from you. So, if you build that kitchen wrong, then the health department can come and shut it down. But if you build it right, then that's sustainable success. See, what that means is, in in our business, we're required to have insurance, right? Amen. In order to have insurance, you have to be, you can't cook in your kitchen at your house. Amen. And they, they insure you to feed people. That's right. Amen. You can't cook in any kitchen and they insure you to feed people. Amen. You have to cook in a health department licensed kitchen Amen. in order to get insurance to be able to feed people the right way. Now we can do it without insurance. There's ways, you've seen the vendors on the corner. There are ways, yep. but at any moment they can snatch it from you, yep. right? Amen. At any moment, that business could not be making money because you didn't do it the right way. Amen. So, Come on. we learn a spirit of excellence from our pastor. We gotta do this the right way. Amen. So in order for us to get insurance, we have to be connected to a licensed health department commercial kitchen. Amen. There is not one licensed health department certified commercial kitchen in about 60 miles that means the Antelope Valley um, Santa Clarita uh, the Valley um, Burbank Glendale certain parts of LA and all the caterers food trucks and people who want to do it the right way they have to drive. We drive to uh, Redondo Beach. Wow. We drive to Redondo Beach Come to cook on. in a commercial kitchen. Come on. Right? Come on. Come on. So Come having on. a kitchen back here. Yeah. But let me go further than that. I'm telling Pastor that, and I'm like, do you know how many people that have to have insurance would have to come to our kitchen? Yeah. We're going to have to have like 24 hours security. And he's like, yeah, that's jobs. 
Mature our vision for what? For the perfecting of the saints. Amen. For what? To work the ministry. You can't work ministry with an immature vision. Amen. And this is what is happening in our ministry right now. We try to work ministry with an immature vision. So when stuff starts to go wrong, the stuff that's right within your realm of vision starts to go wrong, then you become wet wood. Right. When when my husband is tripping, I'm not coming to church because that's all that I can see. That's as far as I can see. Right. My child is coughing. I'm not showing up today because that's as far as I can see. Right. My eye hurts, and I'm not coming today because that's as far as I can see. But then you do have people in here who have mature vision, who can say, my sister passed away yesterday, and I'm not missing service. Right. There are those people in here. I sat in the courtroom watching my son fight for his life. And I was here every Tuesday, every Thursday, and every Sunday through it. All right. Amen. And now God is ready to mature the vision, Amen. right? Amen. I told you I'm going to take you a couple places and then bring you back and drop you off where I picked you up. <laughs> so, all right, where was I? Um, you, you, can't, you can't work ministry with immature vision. Amen. So pastor's job is for us to come in and sit under him. And be faithful. See, because when you're faithful, you don't miss what God is doing. Amen. When you're faithful, you want to grow, you want to learn. You know? Right. When you're faithful, you get you get your vision matured. And then the things that are were within your regular realm of vision don't even matter anymore. Amen. Don't even matter anymore. When babies start to crawl, when they first start to see, they do those little dangling things that's right on the car seat, you know? Amen. When their vision expands, they can see something all the way across the, they can see a little tiny microscopic crumb across the kitchen that they just gotta get to. <laughs> that they ain't worried about this big old ball you set in front of them, because they're not even worried about that no more. Their vision is further. I see something over there that I need to get. So I'm not gonna stop and play with this ball because something my mama don't want me to have is over there. That's how they do it, right? <laughs> Their vision has expanded. Um, their vision has expanded. So I want to start to head back to where we picked up. Um, several different things were going on here. There was the, the, you guys know what, if you weren't here last week, watch last week's message because Pastor preaches it much better than me. I'm just here to point out some stuff. But like something was going on in Samaria and these people had them like completely surrounded, right? I'm paraphrasing. And forgive me, because it's hard to remember a lot of the Old Testament lingo, the Hemorites and Zagatites and all that, right? But basically, like, there was this town, and these people were in it, and they were, like, starving to the point where they were, like, eating their own children. And, and a donkey's head that had no meat on it was sold for, like, a billion dollars, probably not, but something like that. And, and then there was um, a man of God that was sent, and he's uh, talking to the gatekeeper, right? So let's look at that gatekeeper for a second. There's this gatekeeper. The gatekeeper, it says, was close to the king. That's somebody that the king leaned on. He had a position. He had a rank. He was the assistant to the pastor. Right? He was the head of educational ministries. He was high. He had some position and some ranking to him. Right? He was somebody. He labored with the king. To be a gatekeeper, you had to be trusted. Amen. That means like he might even have keys to the church. Amen. Amen. Might have been able to unlock a door or two around here. Amen. He was trusted. He, 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 he obviously had some type of tenure, right? Amen. Like many of us, Amen. right? That's right? Who's here is gener gener generally leadership. Amen. We're over nurseries and outreach and assistance to the pastor and department heads and we have some ranking to us Amen. but here's the danger mm. it did not matter how high he was ranked when the man of God told him that tomorrow a 
about this time, when pastor got up and preached tomorrow, about this time, he didn't get excited. Because all he could see was that these people are starving in front of us. And it's gotten so bad. But he was probably straight because he was close to the king. He probably wasn't eating his children. Let me just be honest. He wasn't like desperate enough because God gave him a job and his sons were cool and he was good. And what happened? The man of God told him because of his, he was like, uh, yeah, unless God was to do a miracle and rain down from heaven like he did with Moses and them, then that ain't gonna happen. The man of God said, it's it's gonna happen. And as a matter of fact, you're gonna see it, but you won't touch it. Mm -hmm. And so what happened? He went to the gate. You know, a whole bunch of stuff happened. The lepers and stuff, which we'll get back to. But he went to the gate, and he saw it, and um, he was trampled to death. Mm. Mm. Let's talk about that word. I told you remember the word perish, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Where there's no vision, mm. the people perish. Amen. Mm. Um, the definition of perish is to suffer death, typically violent, sudden, or untimely. Mm. 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 Because he couldn't see it, he was trampled. And I'm quite sure that that was sudden. I'm quite sure right. to die by being trampled over by yes. people yeah. is violent. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I'm sure it was very untimely because he served as the, the shoulder for the king to lean on. Yeah. How unfair wow. that he didn't get to even touch it. Wow. And I, woo, wow. it hit me, right? Wow. It hit me. And I'll be Danged. Y'all know what I want to say, but I expect full pit. <laughs> if I show up every Tuesday, mm. if I show up every Thursday, mm-hmm. you know there's some nights where I'm ready to go home and, and I see something on my pastor that he needs to get off, so I walk with him to the house and sit there and listen to it. Mm. I'm, he leans on me. Amen. Amen. Wow. But when he said tomorrow about this time, I didn't jump. I didn't get excited because my vision was still so immature. See, the gatekeeper couldn't see it. And if you don't see it before you see it, you won't touch it. I said, if you do not see it before you see it, you will not touch it. If I don't see that kitchen in the back before that kitchen is built, I will not reap the benefits of it. And I don't know about y'all, but my business is blessed because of that kitchen. And not just my business, my son has a job with security back at that kitchen. So he ain't gonna have to go through the things that his peers go through and then he's gonna start bringing people. Him and his friends are gonna be employed by that kitchen. But if I don't see it before I see it, then I'm not gonna touch it. And I can't let that be named among me. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now we close to the house. I'm close to driving you back off where I picked you up. We're almost there. And my prayer truly is that we get it. Amen. Because it doesn't matter how long you've been in this ministry. All right. It doesn't matter what you do in this ministry. Amen. I don't care if you showed up to unlock the gate every Tuesday and every Thursday on time. If you don't see the man of God's vision, Amen. you will not touch it. Amen. Amen. Because the thing about God is it's going to happen. The thing about pastor is that he hears from God. Amen. That's one thing that I know to be true. If I don't know nothing else to be true, that that man hears from God. Amen. I don't care about anything else. I know that the things he's spoken into my life have come to pass. Amen. Everything. Amen. And the things that haven't come to pass yet, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they will. Because if God would have this man to say it, then it's because God meant it. Hallelujah, Lord. And needed me to see it. And needed me to know it. Right? So then let's talk about the the lepers for a second. All right? So there's these lepers. These are, um, and like I said, Pastor explains this so much better than me, but they're these, these, like, nasty, like, uh, disease-filled people. 
right? Amen. They got sin all on them. They out in the world. Just sin all on them. You see it all on them. They in the club, they on Facebook, twerking and acting a fool. That's these people, right? They, they're, they're not even allowed in the city, right? Nobody from the city is going out to get them, but they're like desperate. They need something so bad. They say, we might as well go to these people who are outside of the city holding us captive and see if they'll give us something to eat because either way, we're gonna die. Amen. If we go run up on them or walk up on them and, and try to get something and you know they kill us, then we'll die. But if we sit here, we're going to die. Amen. See, they didn't even have access mm. to anything that was in the city. At least you could get a donkey's head for 80 billion shekels or whatever it was. They didn't have access to that. Mm. The only thing they had access to was the trash that was thrown over the walls mm. of the city. And if there ain't nothing cracking in the city, ain't no trash going over the outside, so they were desperate. Amen. They needed something so bad Amen. that they stumbled upon it. And as they stumbled upon it, you know that, the, that God confused the enemies and made it sound like chariots were coming. Amen. And they got so scared that they ran. They fled. And then what happened? The lepers come up and they're like, oh my God. Look at this. Right? Look at this. Look at all of this. Amen. And they start to grab stuff and eat stuff, and then they say, we're going to be cursed if we don't go share this with somebody. Amen. Amen. Wow. Right? That's, right? that's like, that's like the, the boys and girls club coming in here. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Mm. That's like the world coming in here Amen. and finding out Come on. That's good. Yes. Right. Come on. that this could save the city. Amen. And then running back and telling the city about it. See, Amen. the flood of people is about to hit because what's in this place Amen. is going to sustain something that is dying. Hallelujah. Yeah. What's inside of this place is ready. It has been being prepared for a very long time. Amen. 20 years to be exact. Amen. 20 years of preparation. 20 years of the man of God perfecting the saints and trying to get us to see it and trying to get us to see it and desperately trying to get us to see it Amen. for 20 years. And when the lepers came, and the lepers saw what they had, and they ran back to tell somebody about it, mm -hmm. the people came running through to get it. Amen. Amen. Running through to get it. Amen. Running through to get it. Amen. And what happened to the assistant to the pastors? Amen. What happened? Amen. What happened to the department heads? Amen. The gatekeepers. Amen. They got trampled. Amen. They died when he had an opportunity to see it before they did. Wow. He had an opportunity to see it before they did. He chose Amen. not to. Amen. Amen. They chose not to. If you don't see it before you see it, you won't touch it. Amen. But it's going to happen. Amen. So the kitchen is, is going to get built. Yes. Amen. Amen. The kitchen is going to get built, and that's just the very first step of the expanding because the amount of money that building that kitchen is going to bring into this ministry, the amount of jobs, that building that kitchen is going to bring into this ministry is going to open up businesses that are all stuck next to this and coming out of this ministry just like the man of God's vision said. This is how he's taking us to establish the vision that God gave him. And if you don't see it before you see it, because it's going to happen, it's coming. And if you can't close your eyes and picture your son working back there, then you won't ever touch it. So... I'm not declaring it, but I'm going to remind us what Pastor said last week. Amen. He said, tomorrow, about this time. Mm -hmm. And when I say it this time, I pray to God that it hits different. Lord right? Jesus. right? Yeah. I pray that this time I'm like, Lord, Jesus. Pastor said we need a 40000 to start back there. And even though this job is paying my bills, I'm expecting tomorrow about this time yeah. for something miraculous yeah. to happen. Because we need that bill. heaven 
like he did for Moses and them. In order for this to be done. But, but I see it. So tomorrow, about this time, I'm going to go ahead and... and uh, With a paid pledge, I can guarantee it. Tomorrow about this time, I'm going to put some money on that kitchen. Tomorrow about this time, that's what's going to happen. And I started this out saying that that's going to happen because I'm good wood. That's going to happen because I'm, I'm good wood. That's going to happen because I allowed my vision to be matured and know it's not at the maturity of pastors because I don't see the details of how and the why and all that yet, but but see, God promotes, right? Thank you. And the, the more you promote and the more you grow, your vision expands. And this is where we're going now. If you believe what the man of God is trying to show you, if you see what the man of God is trying to show you, then act on it. The gatekeeper stood at the gate. Imagine that. <laughs> they did. They, when, when the lepers came back and told the people, like, there's all these ruins, people started saying, well, you know, um, maybe they're hiding, waiting to ambush us. Hmm. That's probably what's happening. And so the king, king sent people out to go check and see. Mm -hmm. They came back and said, no, it's for real. Amen. And what did the gatekeeper do? He stood still. He stood at the gate. He didn't, he didn't come in the gate to partake in all the stuff that was coming in. He didn't run out of the gate to go and get the stuff. He stood in the gate. Well, do we go out? Do we come in? It doesn't matter. When God speaks a word, make a move. Amen. Make a move. Don't sit still. Amen. You can't sit still. You can't hear stuff like this from God and sit still. not the only piece of good wood in this place. Amen. I know that beyond a shadow of a doubt because I labor with you guys every single day. Amen. And I watch the way you stand through adversity. Amen. I watch the way your body is attacked, Lee Spratt. Amen. Day before church, Amen. I see your eye. I see your pain. Amen. And I still see you standing and bringing your whole family. Come on! Right? I know what's on your I know what you go through with your family all week and you're still sitting in here Sunday mornings with them. Anthony, I've watched what you've gone through. Amen. I'm doing Amen. that drive just like you, and I see you here after church at, in Bible study still. Amen. Amen. It's draining to sit on a freeway after working mentally for eight hours, nine hours a day, and then sit on a freeway for two hours and then come and be at church. I know what that's like. Amen. But I see you here. Michaela, I watched you do it. Christina, I know what you go through with your mama at home. Amen. I know what you go through with your Hallelujah. children. And I still see you standing in here. Right. So I know. So when I say that I'm not the only piece of good wood, Hallelujah. I know this to be true. Hallelujah. So my utmost prayer is that you got something today. Hallelujah. And and told him it was real and he still just stood there Amen. we can't stand here no more y'all it's time to make a move Amen. if all of your needs are taken care of which is a beautiful thing and i thank god for it every single day don't get it twisted i'm not sitting here like i'm not grateful for this but have you ever watched pastor real quick before we end and i don't even know how long i've been so i'm gonna get ready to close but have you ever watched pastor see when god is telling me all this i'm like god i just got this promotion you already trying to, we already got to go somewhere else? Amen. Can't even get comfortable in this? Amen. Like, can I, can I, yeah. whoo. But have you ever watched Pastor? I'll tell you one of the most rewarding things for me to see, because I truly have a heart for the man of God. I'll tell you, I love that man so much Amen. because of what he's been and done for me and my children. Amen. Um, I truly do. Amen. So it goes a little bit deeper than some of the stuff you see in here. I pray for his body when different things are going on. I can feel it, and I pray for it, and I can tell he just does so much. But one of the most rewarding things to see him do is take off his shoes. Amen. 
he takes off his shoes and he sits them by the couch. And it's like, I'd be like, yes. Because when his shoes are on, he's moving. Amen. Even if he sits down on that couch to try to catch a glimpse of the game, he gets up to go water. He gets up to go minister. Somebody's knocking at the door. He's asking you if you want a glass of water. He just can't sit still. I used to become irritated when I first came in the ministry and, and I was a baby and couldn't see in front of me. And pastor would be like, everybody meet here. We need to raise $20,000 to get this building over off of, what was that, 7th Street. And we would all, no, I mean, it was so much more than that, right? But we would all rush together and make it happen and, and be here early on Saturday mornings and be doing all this stuff. And then as soon as we get that building, we come into church and he says, all right, y'all, we need $40,000. We got to raise $40,000 and I need everybody on hand, all hands on deck. We get in this building over on 11th Street. And I'm like, hey, we ain't even moved into that building, pastor. <laughs> and then we get here and he's like, w w before we can even fill up the half of the nursery, he's like, we got to knock this wall down. And I'm like, this is our first Sunday. <laughs> like, dang, we got to knock it down already. And then as soon as we stay here all night, we're here some long nights. You guys think you're at ministry a lot? You're not. Yeah. You're not. Yeah. <laughs> um, we were here many a late nights. And I've been a part of all of it. From the vision. Every stage, every wall that was painted, every wall that was knocked down, all the power blowers. I've been here for it, right? right. I'm like, all right, pastor, we knocked down the wall. Let's, we got a big church in here. And he's like, perfect. Let's get started on that side over there. <laughs> and I'm like... It's like eight people in here. Shouldn't we wait until there's like 30 seats full in here and then we outgrow it and move over there? No, he's so constant. Amen. He never gets comfortable with what God Amen. gives him. All right. Amen. He praises God and it shows you how grateful he is. He praises God and it shows you how much he appreciates it, but he don't ever get comfortable in it. So yes, I don't care if you received a promotion yesterday. I don't care if you just got past that battle of a job. It says, what's next? Amen. You got your job. What's next? Amen. What's in front of you is now taken care of. Amen. What's next? Amen. We, we made it through all of that. We good. Come on. Let's get to work. Amen. Let's yes. do what we got to do. Let's constantly keep moving. Amen. Let's con This has to be a constant growth. Amen. Nobody in this ministry has arrived. Amen. Nobody in this ministry is so set that they don't have nothing they need to ask God Amen. for today. That's a lie Amen. from the pits of hell. Amen. Because God did not design you to be blessed for you. Amen. It doesn't. Amen. It, how is that glorifying to God that you can pay your bills? What does that show them? Amen. What glorifies God is when somebody comes in and says, I'm homeless, and you say, I own four properties. You can live in this one Hallelujah. while you save some money for the next couple Amen. months. And your rent starts to That's what glorifies God. That's when people say, wow, God is real. When you can hand people checks, when you can pray for somebody, and God tells you they need something, and you can address that need. Amen. Not just you. Amen. This ain't even about you. Amen. It's time for our visions to mature. Amen. So prior to receiving a second offering, which I'm going to do, Amen. I'm going to receive a second offering because there's a budget in this place that will be met. Amen. Amen. Because I'm, I'm, we're not, I'm not going to, why do I have to keep talking about the same stuff over and over? That's why I tell my kids, right? Amen. Andrew, yeah. brush your teeth. Andrew, brush your teeth. And you brush your teeth. By the fourth time I say that, it is so frustrating. Right. Mm. Because this is simple. Amen. We know that this place has to stay open for us to get what we need. Amen. So Amen. talking about the budget is becoming ridiculous. Amen. We will meet the budget. We will do this. Amen. And you have to get to a place where you say, I don't care what it costs. <coughs> we will build the kitchen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. We will build that kitchen. Amen. Amen. We will start. Pastor's not pushing no date back. Pastor's not changing what he had in mind because the vision that God gave him was for him. Was for him. So that he could write it down. And so that when we see it, we can run with it. Amen. That means if it takes $40,000,
Lord, show me what you, where you, where do you need me to go? What do you need me to do? And if he preaches a message like this time tomorrow, that's what I need to go get. Yeah. That's what I'm going to go get because we're going to get it done. But before we receive our second offering, I want you to really think about what part you're going to play. Pastor hasn't got up here and asked for pledges yet because pledges don't get paid. Sometimes. I take that back. Reverse that, Lord. Pledges do get paid, but some people don't. Right? Amen. It's not about pledges. Don't talk about what you're going to do. Go put some money in the man of God's hand. And I'm not talking about a couple dollars. Amen. If he said it's 40000 to build that kitchen, I'm not keeping it to myself. The lepers said I, I would be, we would be cursed yeah. if we kept this to ourselves. Amen. I'm scared of the curse. Amen. I'm scared of the curse because I got sons. Amen. I'm scared of the curse because... I've been serving God too long to miss yeah. it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, what I have, I'm not keeping to myself. And if I don't have it, I'm going to find a way to get it. Amen. Because that kitchen has to be built. Amen. And I'm not just talking just about the kitchen. I'm talking about the entire vision of this ministry. Right now, my vision has expanded to this kitchen. God is going to expand it to the full vision that he's given the pastor, which is businesses yeah. that are going to yeah. sustain your family and your fam all them, fam them family members that are Joseph's, they're going to need jobs. Amen. That's how you show them God is real. That's how you lead them to Christ is by having something to give them <laughs> and your paycheck ain't going to cut it. Amen. Amen. So let's sow into something. Amen. Amen. Before we sow, let's have altar call. Amen. Maybe you've been struggling with your vision. Let's stand to our feet all over the, all over the building. Hallelujah. Maybe this message convicted you, right? Maybe this message made me look at it and see, dang, God, I'll be up in here crying over my children. I'll be up in here crying over my wife, my husband. I'll be up in here crying over these little tiny things that are right in front of me when you have so much more for me. Maybe your prayer is, God, you took care of my immediate needs. I can walk again. My children are saved. My, my marriage is going pretty good right now, so I don't have anything before you. Pray for your vision to expand. Amen. Pray that God matures your vision this morning. This is individual. This is between you and God. Lord, open my eyes. Lord, help me to see the vision because I don't want to miss it. Amen. I've been serving God too long to miss it. I've been faithful for too many Sundays to miss it. I done sold too many tithes and offerings to keep this place open to miss it. Amen. 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 Let's all just pray. Just take some time with you and God. And as you take this time with you and God, really think about what part you play in the vision. If you see it, then there's a part that you play. And figure out what that is. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We just thank you, Lord God. We love you, Lord Jesus. For everything that you are, your entire existence, Father God, we thank you for it, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you've ordered our footsteps, Lord God, that you brought us into a place where there is vision, Father God. Where there is vision, Father God, so we won't perish, Father God. There is vision in this place so that no matter what happens out there in the world, Father God, it can't touch us. So as the world goes into recession and the world fights and the world it won't come in here, Lord God, and we thank you for it, Lord Jesus. Expand our vision on today, Lord God. Help us see what the man of God is saying, Father God. Help us believe the prophecies, Father God, that have been spoken over this place, Father God. You spoke a word through the prophet that millionaires were coming out of this ministry, Father God. And I see it on today, Father God. Open up my eyes so I can see myself being that on today, Lord God. Open up my eyes so I can see my children employed by this place, Father God. We just thank you, Lord God, and we repent, Lord God, for every time that our prayers were selfish. Selfish in that they only glorified us and not you, Father God. We just thank you, Lord God. We love you, Lord God. We're ready to be used. So this time tomorrow, Lord God, our prayer is that you would send down a blessing to build this place, Lord God. Send us a blessing, Father God, to build this place, Lord God. Send us a blessing, Father God. Help us to see this vision 
so that we can run with it, so that we can build it, Lord God. Yes, Lord. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. We just praise you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because you continue to speak to us. You continue to touch us. You continue to mature us, Lord God. And we just love you this morning, Lord Jesus. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor and all the glory, Lord God, as it's due only unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.